Okay. So um, our university information event, just a few aims to start us off. Um, there's first of all going to be an introduction to who we are and what we offer at UCSD. There's going to be a little bit of information on the types of courses um, that we offer here as well. Um, we're going to go through the application process, so both for internal students and external. So we'll cover a little bit of information on UCAS as well as our internal application form. Um, I'm aware of there's quite a few of you listening. Um, some of you may already know quite a bit about us. You may even be South Devon College students yourselves. Um, however, some of you may be um, listening in from a little bit further afield and may not be um, as aware of us. So we will cover um, those bits of information. There'll also be a little bit on student finance. So I'm going to go through some of the, the basics on that. And then Thea's going to step in and talk about the support offered at UCSD and our employability, which is a really important factor when thinking about higher education. So hopefully we'll be able to answer as many of your questions throughout as we go. Um, we're going to try and uh, fit in quite a bit of information into this. Um, there are going to be additional information events as well available a little bit later on, and we may even make those a little bit more bespoke. So we'll take some of your questions throughout and at the end and a little bit of feedback. So if you do have any feedback, if there's anything that you feel we miss, um, then please do let us know and we will um, cover that um, at a later date. OK, so first of all, just a little bit about who we are. So we're a university centre based at South Devon College in Paynton. We offer degrees awarded both from South Devon College and the University of Plymouth. And that really depends what course you um, choose to do with us, um, who it's approved by. So we have got our FDAP, Foundation Degree Awarding Powers, which means that we are able to award our own foundation degrees. And as I said, that really depends on what programme. And that's something that we can advise you on. Um, the information is also on our website. So we've got a range of courses starting from HNCs, foundation degrees and top up years. So you could study with us for as little as one year up to three years full time. We have Teaching Excellence Framework Gold. So um, that is our, our category as a provider. We offer a range of over 30 degree programmes and that's a fact that Quite a few people aren't aware of um, the, the amount of um, degree programmes that we offer. So hopefully there'll be something for everyone. And we've been providing university programmes for over 40 years. So we've been doing it for a long time and we have uh, prided ourselves on our standards and quality and improvement over the years. And we're really pleased with with how we've come. Um, so we provide employment um, focused university programmes. So that, that's a real big plus for us. We really try and um, provide those university programmes in line with employers and employment throughout. So right from the very beginning when we're approving our programmes and throughout in order to maintain standards and quality. But also it's really important that during your study with us and at the end of the qualification, that you feel that you have developed as many skills as possible, not just coming out with a qualification, but you feel that you can go into the world of work um, during and, and after as well. So five reasons to study at University Centre South Devon. Um, those of you that are our current students might have already seen this around the college um, or potentially at bus stops um, around the local area. Um, but just to go through these reasons to study at UCSD. So the first is locality. So you'll not only be able to save money by staying closer to home, um, but also play a part in developing our local area as well. So the majority of our students are within the local area. However, we do have some that come um, further afield. Um, but that's a real big plus for us is that we really try um, and provide something close to home. Um, and I think during these circumstances, it's um, it's never been so important to have that opportunity on your doorstep. Number two is our support. Um, and that's something that Thea is going to be discussing in a little bit more detail later on. But we're passionate about providing dedicated and bespoke support services. So we have a dedicated support hub um, available to you after enrolment. Number three is our accessibility. 
So our degrees are designed to be accessible for anyone, regardless of your personal circumstances. And that's quite a big part of my job, um, speaking to people and trying to break down any barriers that people feel they might have to entering higher education. Number four is our community. And this is a word that we use a lot um, before, during and after with our students. So we re really believe that um, it's important to have that sense of community um, with your peers. So um, combining students with other courses, but also with our staff as well. And the number five is excellence. So when you put all of those reasons together, um, we are able to provide that excellent service and environment, um, giving you every opportunity to excel. So something that I um, always try and discuss and answer is what are foundation degrees? So this is a term that you might never have heard of or you might have heard of it and are unsure what that means and whether you're searching for a course to do at the moment, finding out some more information, it's really important to know um, what foundation degrees are. So it's a degree level qualification, it's not lower than a degree level. It's equivalent to the first two years of an honours degree. And graduates can use letters after their names, FDSC, FDA. So depending whether it's a foundation degree of science or of arts. And then on successful completion, you have a guaranteed place on the final year of the equivalent honours degree with either us at UCSD or the University of Plymouth, depending what programme you're on. So you could either stop at a foundation degree and potentially go into the world of work if you wanted to, or you could continue with us or University of Plymouth and come out with that um, three year full bachelor's degree. We do also have a range of um, higher and degree apprenticeships available. They're not available in every area, um, but some real key areas that we've been developing are in construction, engineering, healthcare, and one of our newest programmes, working with children, young people and families, which started in January. And that's something that we can discuss more with you. So if you really wanted to find out more about earning whilst you learn, and this is, seems to be something that is more and more popular, um, and you, if maybe you just want to find out um, what kind of the difference is between doing an apprenticeship and coming in as a direct student, we can go through that with you. So we can arrange a one to one to discuss those options. Um, and we also have some more information on our website. I just really like to get this image in there. I think it's really nice to see um, that our students celebrate and you can celebrate at a graduation at the end of any qualification with us. So whether that be a HNC after a year, a foundation degree and then a full bachelor's degree. So if you wanted to, you could graduate twice, maybe even three times. So something that's really exciting um, and something really nice to be able to look forward to. OK, so I just wanted to show you a list of our courses. So these are some of our courses that we're providing this September. Um, this list is ever changing. We're constantly going through approvals for new and exciting programmes. Um, so if you're looking at September next year, 2021, um, it may well have expanded and amended slightly. Um, but this is a current list for this September. So we have at the top our adventure leadership and sports coaching and fitness. And then we have a top up year, so a BSc in coaching, which means that you could stay with us if you wanted to for a full three years. And we've got two pathways in that one. So adventure leadership and sports coaching. We've then got our sciences, so our animal science, biosciences and a third year top up in applied animal science. And we've got some animals um, at University Centre South Devon. Um, so we've got some, a nice range of animals based there, um, but we're also in close um, connection with Paint and Zoo, which is something that's really exciting. We've got quite a wide range of um, arts courses available. So contemporary arts practice, creative digital design, film and photography, games and interactive design, and illustration with graphics and animation. So hopefully something there to meet all of your arts needs and desires. We have our social science courses, so history with English, three different psychology programmes with either counselling, criminology and sociology. 
So those ones are currently going through approval um, to be running this September. So some really exciting new changes there. And then we've got a third and final year in education, development and society. And then just to finish our list of courses. Um, so I, I wasn't lying, but we have a long, long list and a, a wide range of programmes available to you. Um, at the top there, we have business and management, tourism, hospitality and events management and our law. And then we've got a top up year in leadership and management. Then we've got some IT, engineering, construction and marine courses. And then we have our education and health based courses towards the bottom. So working in the early years sector, teaching and learning. Then we've got our assistant practitioner, community health and wellbeing, hearing aid audiology, some really exciting new programmes. That working with children, young people and families, which I mentioned earlier. So a few of those are available as apprenticeships as well. A HNC enhanced care work and two top up years. So child development and education and enhanced integrated care. So hopefully, as I said, um, we can offer something for everyone. Hopefully that sparks your interest if you haven't already applied for us. And if you wanted to find out more information on the courses specifically, I'm not going to go into them specifically now. Um, we do have a lot more information available on our website. In particular, the fact sheets at the bottom of the course pages are really, really useful for some quick facts and tips about the courses. Um, but also, if you wanted to speak to us about them, we're available on the phone and via email and we'll be able to give you those details at the end. OK, so the application process. So if you haven't already applied to us and you're looking to apply for September, it's absolutely not too late. You may have seen that you can set an original deadline of the 15th of January, um, but please don't panic about this. I've had a few phone calls um, over the last few weeks about this um, and it's absolutely fine. That's an original deadline set by UCAS, but we're still accepting applications onto all of our programmes for September at the moment. So if you have any questions specifically about different courses, um, please let us know. But if you're an external um, student, so you're not a current South Devon College student, you will need to apply via UCAS. So that's a separate organisation to us. So you will need to register on their website. If, however, you are a current South Devon College student, you can apply via our internal application form. So that should be available on your Moodle courses if you're on a level three course or it's available on our website. So it's a short online form and this takes out the need to apply via UCAS. Um, you therefore don't need to pay um, or include a personal statement. And that's because we'll be liaising with your tutors um, as you are a current student with us. We provide one to one advice sessions um, on both of those elements. So if you're a little bit nervous about completing an online form or you've got any questions about it, um, you can arrange a one to one with us. So um, we're, of course, working virtually, um, but we're still available on the phone and via email. And if you're looking at part time or apprenticeship options, um, then please do email us and we've got a separate paper based application form for you. There's also more information on how to apply on our dedicated page on the website. So please do have a little look and, um, and explore if you haven't yet applied to us. So just moving on now to student finance. So I've got a, a few different slides on the basics of, of student finance. Um, these are up to date facts and figures as of this month, as there's there's been a couple of changes this month to the student finance. Um, but all the up to date information, if there's anyone that's listening to this um, webinar at a later date, please do continue to have a look on the student finance website. So gov.uk forward slash student finance to make sure you're looking at the, the most up to date um, data, facts and figures. So Student Finance England, it provides financial support on behalf of the UK government to students from England entering higher education in the UK. I like to separate these into to two different areas. So you, you'll have two main costs whilst you're studying and those will be tuition fees and living costs. So I'll be referring to them as a tuition fee loan and a maintenance loan. So the student finance available to help you with both of these elements. 
Depending on your circumstances, you can also be eligible for extra financial help whilst you study, so such as a childcare grant or a um, disabled student's allowance. Um, I'll touch on them briefly, um, but there's more information on Student Finance website about those. So the first section is going to be um, what student finance you can get. So um, what sort of things you might be eligible for. So starting with the tuition fees, um, it's worth if you're having a look at um, different universities, if you're currently in a process of assessing um, what universities you're, you're wanting to consider. Um, the fees, knowing the fees is really important um, and that should be um, a consideration for you. So our fees currently are 8,400 per year for a full time course and pro rata for part time. Um, this is less than other institutions, um, so it's, it's really worth having a look at those. So eligible students for tuition fees won't have to pay any tuition fees up front. So that's one of the, um, the barriers that I like to try and break down if possible um, for people thinking about entering higher education. It's not um, necessary for you to have any tuition fees um, up front at the start. Um, a tuition fee loan is available to cover the fee charged by your uni or college. Um, so you can see at the bottom there it says up to 9,250 for full time courses um, at a publicly funded uni or college, um, but that will vary depending on the university. So make sure you do have a look at those. The amount of tuition fee loan you get doesn't depend on your household income. And Student Finance England pay that loan directly to your uni or college. So that would go directly from them to us, that you therefore don't have to play that, that middle person um, during that process. So once you've applied and it's all been approved, um, then you shouldn't really have to worry too much about the tuition fee loan until perhaps this time next year when you're then applying for your next year um, at uni. Tuition fee loans do have to be repaid. It is a loan, um, but only once you've finished or left your course and your income is over the repayment threshold. So it's not necessarily an instant thing that you start repaying that loan. And that's something to, to have a look into, um, even though it may be early days for you. Um, but just knowing how that repayment works um, is quite important and I'll touch on it in a minute. So the maintenance loan. And you can get a maintenance loan to help with your living costs, such as rent. So this is the loan that gets paid to you directly. So whatever bank account you pop on your um, application to student finance. So all eligible students can get some maintenance support. That amount of maintenance support does depend. So the amount depends on where you live and where you study. Um, you can also apply for more based on your household income. So the maximum amount will be based on household income. OK, and there are a few variations to that as well. So student finance have quite a long list um, of different variables. A really good way to have a little look about what sort of income you could um, be assessed on and therefore what loan you may be eligible for. Um, there's a student finance calculator on their website, so it's definitely worth having a little look at that. Um, perhaps that's really important um, for you to make up your, your decisions. So definitely have a look and see what sort of information they base that on. Um, and as I've said, it's then paid directly into your bank account each term. So it is in three installments and this matches the tuition fee loan that is paid to your uni or college as well. So um, generally it's paid in September, January and then April. So three installments. Maintenance loans, um, as like the tuition fee loans that I've mentioned, do have to be repaid. But again, not until you've finished or left your course and your income is again over the repayment threshold. So um, some maximum levels for the maintenance loan for 2020 to 21. Um, so a few different variables depending on what you're considering. So if you're at a parental home, so living at home whilst you study, you could be eligible for up to 7,747 per year. And then there's a couple of different um, elements. So living away from home outside of London and living away from home and studying in London. So you can just see how that differs.
Another important aspect, as well as knowing the fees, um, will be the bursaries. So when we're talking about finance, it's really important that you're aware um, whether you are eligible for any bursaries or not. So again, if you're at the time where you're assessing different options and um, looking at different universities and colleges, just make a note as to whether they do have any bursaries. If there's nothing available on their website about it, um, then do feel free to get in touch um, and they'll be able to answer any inquiries on that. Um, we offer quite a substantial bursary. So there's three different elements. Um, we've got a South Devon College bursary. So if you're sat there um, and you're a current South Devon College student, then you could be eligible for a thousand pounds. Um, and that's actually if you've studied um, within the last three academic years with the college. There's a Devon Development Bursary, which again is a thousand pounds. And that is where you must be currently progressing to UCSD from a sixth form within Devon. So if you're currently at a sixth form now and you're looking at applying for this September, then you'll be eligible for the thousand pounds. And then we have a care leave bursary new for this year, which again is a thousand pounds. And then as a standard, if, if none of those um, fit um, in with your criteria, then um, you're eligible for a £200 bursary. So that is available to all new students. So all new students are eligible to, to some sort of bursary with us. And just to note um, that bursary, if that is a factor um, when you're considering your options, please do note that it is also split into three different parts. So very similar to student finance, those would be paid in October, January and then April. So 50%, 25% and 25%. The latter two payments are also based on um, a particular attendance um, as well as full submission of work. And then as I mentioned, um, there is some extra help uh, that may be eligible to you. So if you have children or an adult who depends on you financially, or if you have a disability, including a long term health condition, mental health condition or specific learning difficulty. So those are the other couple of elements that you may also be eligible for. Um, so please do answer all the questions on student finance um, and make them aware of all of your circumstances if and when you do apply. Um, and then throughout the application, those options will open up um, throughout. OK, so how to apply for your student finance. Um, it's a lot more streamlined. It's a lot nicer to apply for your student finance than it was a good few years ago. Um, so just a couple of questions here. Um, what is the easiest way to apply for your student finance? So the easiest way is online. So at gov.uk forward slash student finance. That is how student finance would, would ideally like you to apply. It's probably the quickest way to do it. Um, however, if you're unable to do it online, um, you can request for a form um, to be sent to you. Um, you can just download that form and, and send it back. When should you apply for your student finance? as soon as possible once the application service opens. So the application service is open now for student finance. It's been open for a few weeks um, and they recommend um, you applying before June to ensure that you can get your finance paid on time in September. Um, it generally takes about six weeks for them to go through and process applications. So it is best if you can apply for this as soon as possible um, and we're available as well if you do have any questions about that um, and perhaps can't get through to student finance um, we're more than happy to try and help you wherever possible. So student finance applications, um, so apply early to make sure your money is ready for the start of your course. Um, that's not a, a cut off. So if you if you do wait until um, perhaps the end of the summer or you're a, you're a later applicant for whatever reason, um, there's no cut off for that student finance before the start of the course. Um, what it just means is that your payment, your first payment may just be slightly delayed. Um, but it, uh, what I would recommend if you're a little bit later on in the year, perhaps listening to this um, or considering starting and haven't yet applied for your student finance, get in touch with us uh, and we can support you through that um, to get that done as soon as possible. Um, just one thing to note, you don't need to uh, confirm place at a uni or college in order to apply. So um, UCAS, of course, have moved back their deadlines um, to respond to unis until next month. Um, 
you can wait until then if you want to, of course, um, but we would recommend you still apply um, as soon as possible and pick your preferred place. Um, and you can later change the details on your student finance application if you need to. And again, we can support you with that. So just a little um, screenshot of what that government page looks like. So this is the one that you're looking at going to um, in order to apply. There's lots of different bits of information on there. Um, it's got the points that I have um, outlined, but in a lot more detail. So if you would like a little bit more reading on that, please do go to the website um, and just have, have a, a little look. Um, and then you can log into your account, register and start applying. The studentroom.co.uk is also a really good website um, that we recommend using. So again, lots of different information on student finance there. There's also some really useful information for parents and partners of people applying. So if we've got any parents um, that are listening at the moment um, or partners, then that's a really good page to have a look at um, and find out a little bit more information. There's also an Ask um, Student Finance England um, and their Twitter feed at the bottom of there as well, which again is really useful to have a look at. As well um, as those sites, UCAS actually has a lot of information on student finance as well. So especially if you've already made an application through UCAS and have grown quite comfortable with using the website, it might just be worth having a look on there um, and they've broken it down into some nice um, simple boxes so that you can just have a have a little flick through. Um, that does only show a handful of the boxes. There's a lot more information on there um, when you go on. So again, have a look, have a look at UCAS. And um, how to support an application. So if if we have any um, parents that are listening at the moment, um, so if your child applies for student finance, you will give them your income details um, and that enables your child to get paid. Um, in kind of the, the simplest terms, um, but all the instructions will be given um, when your child applies on student finance and you'll be prompted and emailed to um, pop in your, your income details. So repaying your student loan, so this is something I mentioned a few minutes ago and it is an important part of it um, and hopefully will help to break down any myths um, potentially about higher education and funding um, and break down any barriers. So how much do you know? So a couple more questions. Um, what will your student loan repayments be based on? Your future income. OK, so I've mentioned um, earlier that it will be based on um, income being over a threshold, which I'll go through in a minute. And how much do you need to earn before you start to repay? So this was the, the main element that changed only this month. There was talk about it for um, a few months before and it's increasing in, in line with inflation. Um, so now it currently stands at £26,575 a year um, and then you've got the monthly and weekly there as well. So a little bit more on repayments. So you won't make repayments, just to remind you, until your income is over the repayment threshold and you have finished your qualification um, or left the course. So if you study a full time course, you will be due to start repaying in the April after graduating or leaving the course. Um, if, um, however, your income is over that repayment threshold. And then this is where it potentially starts to get a little bit more confusing, um, but this has been broken down quite nicely on their website as well. Um, but you'll repay um, a rate of 9% of your income over the threshold. And if your employee deductions will be made uh, from your pay through the HMRC tax system. If your income falls below that threshold, um, so if in the future for whatever reason that income does fall back below, your repayments will stop automatically. Any outstanding loan balance will be cancelled 30 years after entering repayment. So again, hopefully um, that is just answering um, a few potential myths or just questions about the student loan system. So our student loan repayments, um, here's just a, um, a table to demonstrate. Um, hopefully it's a little bit easier to kind of see how much that repayment could be. These are just approximate repayments um, that we've got, we've been given from student loan company. So you can see the new income um, threshold is 26,575. 
Um, and then between there and 27 starts at three pounds monthly repayment. And it does, of course, go up um, the more you're earning. OK, so if you have any specific questions about that, um, of course, do ask us. Um, but Students Loan Company will answer any questions about that. And as I've mentioned, there's a lot more in detail um, information on their website as well. So some key points to remember, that's quite a lot of information um, and I try to condense it um, as much as possible and cover those um, key key factors. But just to remind you, tuition fee loan is available to all eligible students. Um, research or finance available to you. So um, remember I said about the bursary available. So I've gone through the UCSD bursary, but do compare that to other unis and colleges if you are at that stage at the moment. Apply for your student finance online and on time. So no need to wait for a confirmed place. You can amend it at a later stage if needed. And repayments will be linked to your income, not what you owe. And then any more information, as I've mentioned, have a look at their website. Um, you can speak to an expert online um, as well. They are also answering questions on their media. Um, of course, due to the, the current circumstances, um, they have fewer um, staff members working. Um, however, they are working really hard to answer their phones. Um, and I've been speaking to students recently who have got in touch with them um, and have waited a little bit of time, but they've got back to them um, pretty impressively. OK, so that's all of my um, information. So we've gone through um, the, the, the base information about UCSD, the courses that we offer, um, the application process, student finance, so quite a lot of information um, and now back to specifically UCSD um, we just want to speak to you about the student support that's available. So now I will be passing you um, to my colleague Thea um, to do some of the talking. Hello, yes, um, so my name is, um, is Thea, as Lauren has introduced, so I am the um, Senior Employability and Enterprise Coordinator at UCSD, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about student support um, and then a little bit kind of more specifically about employability. Um, so just uh, to introduce you, so in terms of student support, um, so we have got a dedicated student support hub um, at UCSD, which provides um, a range of support for students, um, all stages ages in some cases um, you might meet them before you come to us um, and kind of as you through the application stage and certainly in some cases in in my case I support students once they've graduated as well in terms of kind of looking for, for jobs um, so it includes things like academic supports so that's things like referencing researching study skills or things like time management uh, also disability and well-being so including mental health and counseling um, and then also employability um, and support is also available um, kind of as part of the student support hub and as part of the wider HE team as well with things like funding so if you speak to um, if you speak to Lauren about also things like academic regulations and extenuating circumstances um, so the support is is very much it's very flexible and very tailored to students' needs. Um, so we have bookable one-to-one -one tutorials, sometimes it's drop-ins, um, sometimes programme teams will organise for a member of the support hub to, to go in and talk to um, a group about a specific um, topic um, or work with them kind of over a series of weeks um, to kind of build their confidence with, with certain topics or address certain issues. Um, and also um, you, as it wants, you're a student as well, you, you can request extra support to, to manage your studies um, or kind of help maintain your mental health and well-being. And there's lots of kind of dedicated um, support that can that can be put in place to support you um, throughout your time with us um, and beyond. Um, but moving on specifically to um, employability, which is, is my area. So um, in terms of uh, kind of choosing to study higher education, um, so a big pull for a lot of people, um, especially maybe for those kind of career changes or those that have maybe had time out of education. Uh, a big reason is is an opportunity to improve your career prospects um, and also increase your earning potential. So there's um, kind of research out there. Um, data was published um, 
by the Department for Education in April 2019 um, and showed that in 2018, uh, working age graduates earned um, £10,000 more uh, the non-graduates and also had higher employment rates um, so it's definitely um, kind of an attractive pool for people that are looking um, whether they have a clear idea in mind of, of where they want to go in their career or whether they're looking to, to kind of help explore their options um, so in, in some cases for certain careers you will need to do a specific um, qualification uh, a specific level to get into that area so medicine um, certain kind of certain other sectors you know if you want to be a teacher or an engineer for example um, but doing a higher education qualification at any level can actually open doors beyond the more obvious career opportunities. So there's a resource that I often share with students um, kind of from day one really and also when we're kind of working more with students that are going to be soon graduating um, is um, Prospects which is a graduate kind of organisation supporting graduates. They've got a resource called What Can I Do With My Degree um, and that basically kind of covers um, a load of kind of lots of different degree areas um, and actually looks so, OK, so these there are certain jobs which are directly related to your degree, but actually there are certain jobs um, where the skills and experience that you would have developed as part of your degree could actually really lend itself very well. Um, because as part of your degree, it's not just kind of writing assignments. Um, obviously, that is that is a big part and, and the assignments and the kind of learning part is, is a big part. But also through that, you're developing and applying your knowledge. Um, you're gaining kind of specialist skills, um, kind of specialist to your subject area, but also transferable skills. So communication, presentation, um, maybe figuring out what sort of things you do and don't like. So for some of our students, it might be that they have to start doing some presentations and they think I do not like public speaking but therefore that kind of helps them then think kind of going forward they would then not look for a career in which they would need to be doing a lot of public speaking um, but also you'll be getting the opportunity to undertake work experience and engage with employers so it's kind of looking at that kind of more holistic experience um, of the of kind of higher education I mean it's also an opportunity to develop and explore your interests um, and kind of gauge your abilities in relation to certain areas and, and kind of in line with that with future work and then also kind of how you can how to get there. So looking specifically at your course, um, so there's obviously kind of the, the wider um, activities that you'll be undertaking, but also specifically in your course, employability is embedded in lots of different ways. Um, and it's all working to support students to develop those kind of relevant skills, the knowledge, the attributes and, and the experience, which are going to lend itself well to um, careers within that area, but also in kind of the broader jobs market. So there might be things like assessments, which um, kind of emulate or simulate the sort of work that you might be undertaking um, within kind of particular roles. It could be trips and visits. You could have guest speakers coming in to talk to you about certain employers or certain lines of work, uh, practical activities. Um, and I always really say to students, even kind of before they start with us, actually, it's really important to make the most of these opportunities and use them as an opportunity to explore maybe what you like, what your strengths, what your weaknesses are, and also reflect on, OK, what you know, what you're developing, um, because that's going to really help you when you're kind of supporting, you know, when you're working towards your career aims and, and give you a really good idea of what you might be suited to. Um, it might even change your mind on certain things. I know I speak to some students and, and they definitely find that they come in thinking one thing uh, they want what to go in down one path and actually then they maybe change their mind or they realize that they're not suited to that or or something um, and also a degree on its own isn't enough to land your dream job nowadays um, so actually there's it's thinking about um, those kind of wider um, activities and, and being able to really demonstrate um, how you're capable so being able to kind of refer to examples through your degree um, and kind of from other experience that he might have gained around or previously to your degree um, so that's it from me um, so thank you for listening to my section I will hand over um, to well we'll kind of open for, for any questions now um, and I think Lauren might um, possibly be needing to answer some more of these than me um, but Lauren we did have a question which I spotted in the Q&A around um, funding for people that have already got a BSc for example that might want to retrain I said around uh, students usually aren't eligible if they've already received funding at a certain level but maybe you can provide a bit more information 
Yes, yeah, thank you, Thea. Um, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, as a standard, um, student finance won't fund you to do an additional um, higher education course. So it's normally the case if you already hold a BSc that student finance wouldn't fund you again. Um, however, there are some um, some alternatives. Um, so it does really depend on what course you studied and when you studied it. So my advice um, isn't just a blanket no, um, it's a probably no, um, but do please check with student finance. So um, I have written on there um, the student finance number, so I would recommend just giving them a call um, and they'll have, they should have your details um, on, on record um, of what you studied. Um, if they don't, then just give them those details and they'll be able to tell you exactly how much funding you have remaining, if any. Um, so I think that's that's probably the, the best advice that we'd be able to give on that one. But yeah, really good question, thank you. Um, I think we had another question on, um, do you do paramedic apprenticeships, which again, Thea, you answered, um, which unfortunately we don't do specific paramedic courses, um, but you've linked to the health programmes, um, which is exactly what I would have done. So um, it would be worth having a look at the closest one, which is our assistant practitioner, um, but it might also be worth just having a look at where does those specific um, apprenticeships and paramedic degrees. Um, and the other question, the first one we had, um, will the info be available to download after today's webinar? I should have said that at the beginning. Um, yes, absolutely. This is all recorded and a link will be available on the website. Um, so yes, definitely. Um, I have asked if there are any more questions, but I don't think we do at the moment. No, it doesn't look like it. Um, Thea, did you uh, think of any when I was talking? Um, I don't think so. I think you, no. you covered everything very thoroughly. <laughs> Perfect. We'll go with that then. <laughs> um, brilliant. I mean, if, if anyone does have any questions, um, please do um, pop up. I think, um, Thea, you're live with the PowerPoint. If you just go on to the okay. next slide. Okay. Yeah, so um, please do send us an email um, to university at southdevon.ac.uk. Um, that was that one is being checked daily by our administrator um, and will be sent on to the relevant person to answer any questions. Um, so as, as little um, as the question you feel might be or likewise as, as larger the question might be, um, please do just pop it in an email to us um, and we'll try our best to answer your question. Um, if we're unable to, then we will signpost you. And then um, final thing from me and, and us is just to let you know of our next upcoming event, um, which is very excitingly our research showcase. So that is being held between Monday the 4th and Thursday the 7th of May. So that is next week. Um, so please do register on our website for those. We've got over 15 um, lecturers that are now showcasing their research on their subject specialisms. Um, so something that's really exciting um, if you're starting with us in September, if you've already applied, if you haven't quite yet decided, um, those are some really great opportunities to be part of um, a talk that is of interest to you um, and also a great opportunity to listen to our fabulous um, lecturers um, talking about their first hand research. So that's the next one that's upcoming um, and we are going to set some more of these information events um, up in the diary as well. Um, so if your questions haven't quite been answered um, or you were looking for something a little bit more specific, please do give us some feedback um, and some, some positive feedback as well. Um, it's always greatly welcomed. So any feedback at all, do let us know. Um, and I think the last thing to say is thank you very much for listening and being part of our first um, virtual information event.